What's going on, y'all? Just chilling with my man, Capo, and it's beautiful. Was it Friday morning? Yeah. Yeah, it's Friday morning. Friday morning. We're just sitting out here. Lots of sun. On the deck with a bunch of sun. Just having some conversations. Um, Real talk. Yeah. Getting down to the nitty gritty about life. <clears throat> Taking, I guess, the layer of BS off the top of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, one thing I do appreciate the friendship I have with this man is that we're able to talk about most things that I think society guys um, don't talk about just in general about feelings what guys go through um, perceptions of how guys should be in society and you know for both of us it's it's really really uh what you say I guess say therapeutic to get these things off of our chest as guys and not be judged judged yeah definitely judged or expected to be judged yeah, that we have an expectation that we could be judged for um, saying how we feel. Having emotions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, that, that part about having emotions, I've had a lot of um, recent conversations with people, um, interviews and stuff like that about men and their emotions, you know, and how those impact people, how they impact the man, but people around them. But I think the biggest thing that you and I have been talking about is especially how it affects men. Mm-hmm. You know, that it's okay to say that men have emotions. We do. I mean, human, all human beings have them. But to be able to express them without judgment in today's society is a huge thing. Because guys don't get to do that. At least on a normal without, you know, somebody coming at you. Because, I mean, I've done it. Been there, done that too. You know, maybe at some times you've done it. Oh, don't worry about that, G. You know, let's just go outside. Let's go kick it. Let's hit the club. Let's hit the studio. Let's just train. Let's work through it, and everything will be fine. You know, and instead of just really getting down to the nitty gritty and going, dude, this is how I feel. I'm I'm messed yeah. up about this shit. You know. Definitely stay stay busy. We also gotta discuss or work through some of your stuff that actually you're not used to working through. Because life comes at you in many different ways. Yeah. And it's not it's not it's not always uh, happy. And it's not always sad. It's not always. Sometimes it makes you angry. Sometimes it makes you frustrated. And the last thing you want to do is is be living in an angry state of mind. So you gotta talk to someone or at least work on those inside issues. And you can't always do that alone. So it's not it's nice to have people and friends that you can actually work through some of those emotions before it gets to a intense upsetting situation so I think Ian you're right about the intense you know upsetting situation I think not expressing those emotions makes it even more intense Mm -hmm. because it gives it time you know to bubble inside of you yeah. And it bubbles and bubbles and bubbles and bubbles and by the time it comes out you know it explodes I know that's I've done that you know in my in my journey of life that I'll just keep it bottled up and keep it bottled up and bottled up you know and then when it comes out it's just like boom and they're like whoa where the hell did that come from I didn't know you feel that way Yeah. you know what I mean and then it has affected relationships with family and friends and stuff like that just because they're like dude you should have said something a long time ago you know but I, I guess at those times you feel like you don't you're not allowed to have the space to say it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I guess it's, I mean, it's good that we have these conversations, you know, like I tell this homie all the time, you know, I appreciate him just because I can bounce stuff off of him that I can't bounce off of a lot of other people, even other guys, you know, and, um, and not feel judged. You know, there's a lot of things that we relate to in different forms of fashion, not only just in dance, but life, philosophies, experiences, um, even the way we grew up, we might look completely, di- obviously we look completely different, <laughs> but there's a lot of things, our philosophies and things that we experienced growing up that we relate to. It was kind of the same, just being artists, you know, not only dancers, but being artists in general. Yeah, actually being, being an artist is, um, brings a lot more emotion and feelings to the table when you're doing your art. There's, there's a lot more deep seated issues and and expression coming out of that then especially if you're, you're living the life doing it every day you have to work through some some personal stuff before you put yourself in the public's eye mm-hmm. and uh, 
you know, I, I, I've done a lot of personal work myself for a, a lot of years now that has actually like helped me open up and, and be comfortable with with expressing my feelings. So then later when I'm doing my art, my my brain and my my being is more open to whatever comes, and then what comes out of it is is a lot more positive expression and, and uh, you know emotion behind. Yeah. My feelings, so I'm like in a better place if, when it's all said and done. Mm hmm. That's dope, dude. Cause like, like for me right life now, changes. Oh. life changes on a on a dime. And uh, past and present, it's 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 kind of like uh, I don't know. Big thing for me was learning how to live in in the moment rather than live in the past and look too far in the future. So it's it's more like it's more like you know live in the present and look to the future and just one day at a time type. Yeah. That's because what what comes to you is going to come to you for for a reason that will eventually shape your life in another way that'll actually be where you're supposed to be. Very true. We don't really have control over that, but sometimes I think as, as men we we feel like we have to control that process and initially we don't have that control so accepting the fact that we don't have the control makes life a lot easier mm -hmm. let me ask you that on, on that do you think that control is a, a fear a fear the fear of unknown mm -hmm. what's going to happen what's around the corner because mm -hmm. like you said you know certain things will show up in life because you're right life changes on the dime but when that change happens because because that change happened you're like oh sh what do i do what's gonna what's gonna happen next so that fear comes in so then you try to control everything around you to create an environment that makes you feel safe because things are changing mm -hmm. and that environment isn't always healthy yeah because what's healthy for for just people in general male female whoever you are it's um lots of times what's healthy is the stuff that we're not willing to look at mm -hmm. the stuff that makes us it that makes us feel in fear and, and scared to move forward so but you also have to be ready for it, and you have to do a little leg work to get there. It's not gonna fall in your lap. Could that I'm, I'm considered from experience? That I mean, could be we, considered. We all are, but yeah, that could be considered a fear too, as well. Just starting the leg work. Yeah, the leg work is because because lots of times the leg work is is not not gonna necessarily take you where you expect it to go. You might set a goal, but it's gonna take you somewhere different every time. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're gonna and. and I think it's set up that way because you you put too much expectations into what you might want, and then when you're actually doing what you want, you realize that it wasn't expected. I mean, my my dance career came about because I was going to school and I wanted to be like a filmmaker or an artist and you know painting and stuff, and somehow I found myself meeting you know, on the weekends, going to the clubs, hanging out with friends, dancing, and then I got connected to a, a like, a professional company, and then it kind of changed my life, but it land, kind of landed in my lap, and I didn't really think anything of it, mm. but then when it came to me, I was like, oh, this, this might be where I'm supposed to be, and then 20 years later, I'm still doing it. Yeah. So who would have thought, you know? <clears throat> Very true. Yeah, it's right. We have no control of how things are going to play out. You know, we, we I think, set a plan in our head. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a lot easier as human beings if we just set that intention and kind of let things play out the way they're going to. But yeah, you, like you said, you have to do some legwork, but then there's a lot of things, of factors that are out of control because you might have a goal to get to this one space, this one place, but it might take you way over here and then over here before you even get to there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never a straight line. It's always a freaking right. up, down, left, right. And one of the patterns I found in my life a lot of times, there's always a fork or two decisions to make, you know? Like, and each one has its pros and cons. Like this, if you go this way, here's your pros and cons. If you go this way, here's your pros and cons. That's everything, though. Yeah. And I think that just recognizing it's that. There's going to be a pros and cons with everything you do in life. Yeah. You get a re really good job, a really good, really good career, and there'll still be pros and cons. It's not going to be 100% brilliant all the time. One year, two years, 20 years, you're 
still going to have moments where you're like, is this, is this where I want to be? Is this where I'm supposed to be? Yeah. But like, if you, if, if you still enjoy the journey and the process, it probably is where you want to be. When you stop learning, if you stop enjoying the process, then that's, that's when it's probably time to move on mm -hmm. and try something different. Yeah. Dude, I can... <clears throat> I mean, I can say this to you. You know, and whoever decides to watch this and who understands me and you, <laughs> you you know this, dude. I've been struggling with that, with dance, especially the last four years, you know, of the process of that thing that drives you, that wakes you up every day, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, both of us, we have that 20-plus year career, and the last four years, you know, I've been wavering back and forth because it doesn't wake me up anymore like it used to, you know? Like, yeah, I enjoy teaching. But like the as we know the preparation for performing and getting on stage and if you gotta go on the road to do the show and the ups and downs of that like it doesn't drive me so finding that new thing and like you know four years ago finding paintball and playing you know in a competitive fashion in that way drove me it woke me up you know it gave me something else to fire my life with yeah because you, you you need a another outlet yeah especially when you're burnt out and then you gotta find that outlet and then enjoy that for a while and then it probably comes full circle and brings you back to what you're meant to do yeah or be and even with that process allowing um somebody to go through that process mm -hmm. you know because we get uh you, you've been through this we've both been through this you kind of get labeled as this is all he does you know mm -hmm. you we talked about that you know you get labeled as just a b-boy you're so much more than a, a b-boy i mean in my eyes you're all around great dancer, you know, technique, um, amazing artist. You know, there's so much more to Kale than just a guy who b-boys. And I think it's society labels us and sees us as that because, you know, you have people who look up to you for what you've done in your, your dance career. And, you know, people told me that too. They were like, well... the first impression. Yeah. Because the first impression when I started dancing, it was, you know, break dancing was my strength. And now it's evolved into other things because I'm older and my body's telling me different things mm -hmm. so you know and recently I've been asked to do other things other than breaking and I still I still be boy I just I just um, I don't it doesn't wake me up in the morning I wake up for other things yeah you know either in in work dance and all this or, or the arts and it expands but that that's I think just age it just comes about that way I think everyone might have that experience at some point and if they're not having it it's it's uh, that's probably their story too yeah because there's a few people that would just be you know do one thing and just keep going with it and then there's, there's the majority of us i think have a few things in our life like my mom used to say something like every three five years you kind of change your career or at least the philosophies behind it mm -hmm. i always think of that when i'm burnt out on teaching and dance and, and then um and then once I'm able to do that, I can kind of find something else to, to pass my time by and then uh, give myself a break so I can come back to what I loved about it, you know, a few weeks down the road or whatever. Yeah. Or months, sometimes months. Depends. <clears throat> no, you're right. But yeah. the persever it, uh, persevering with, with the journey definitely, you know, still will open doors because I still have doors open for me in, in the dance world that I would have never expected and a lot of that also is because I dedicated my life to you know the art form uh, with all its ups and downs mm -hmm. and yeah it's a process yeah no definitely definitely man well again you know um, I don't, I'm not going to go long and on on this video. It's just I just wanted to capture a moment where you, for people who watch this, <laughs> of, you know, somebody, a man that I appreciate, that I've yes, spent yes. a long, lot of time with on stage and off stage, um, and at this stage of both of our lives, being able to contemplate a lot of things about life and just know, dude, like, how much I appreciate you and being able to have yeah, these conversations and our friendship, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it means a lot more than just hip hop heads, um, teachers, mentors, you know, as friends, you know what I'm saying? Because our our relationship and our interaction is 
especially recently, mm -hmm. has really helped me to grow, you know, more and look at things differently and kind of step back on some of my own actions. And it's like, okay, is this right? You know, can I review some things? Maybe I can get a better perspective on things and not just be coming from my egotistical point of view. Yeah, don't rush anything. Let, let it fall in place the way, where it's supposed to fall in place and do the work to to get to that other place that you probably know. And most of the time, that's, that's stuff that you probably don't know is coming. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So throw the expectations out and just do what, do what you care about. Yeah, for sure. It makes you feel good about yourself personally without any other, without people's influences and, you know, you can take, take the influences and discussions like we have and then, you know, use, use those tools to improve your life. Just with, with, with your community, with the people, with your friends, with your family, all that stuff and then see what happens. Because in the end, the journey, should, the journey should be the blast. That should be the fun part. I think we wrap it up on that note. Like, he <laughs> killed it on that part. I, I have nothing else to say. So thank y'all. Please enjoy. More to come. <laughs> More to come. Take care. Double peace. Deuces. Triple peace. Oh, there you go, impersonating. He does the funniest impersonation of me. Like, I had to laugh myself <laughs> watching the video. Like, it's pretty funny. Don't do it. No, don't do it, dude. Fade the black. Bye.